getting into this episode of GH, um, this episode yet again was a hot mess. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I try my hardest sometimes to defend Nina's foolishness. I can't defend anymore. I just feel like they totally regressed Nina back to who she was a year ago. Like at the beginning of the year, like just a fool. If Carly was sleeping with Jagger, who business is that? She got a nerve to sit there. Oh, what would Sonny think? What would Drew think? What would Jason think? Who gives a fuck what either one of them clowns think? Last time I checked, Carly is very much single. There ain't not one ring on her finger. She ain't married to nobody. She ain't dating nobody. She can do whatever she want. It's none of their business. It's none of Nina's business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't understand, Nina. Like, why do you keep jumping to these damn conclusions? She's doing the same thing with Carly that she did with TJ and Willow. When um, she saw them being around each other and stuff, hugging and this, that, and the third, she kept thinking that they was having an affair. And guess what? She had egg on her face because she was dead wrong. Here she go again doing the same damn thing, jumping to conclusions. And she couldn't wait to bust up in Drew office and let everybody know about Carly and Case. Now, why would you do that? Why would you go in and tell a room full of people that they're clearly having a business meeting and you're just going to bust up in there? Carly sleeping with Kate. Mind your damn business. <laughs> this woman is so unhinged. My, like, I, I just can't. I can't wear her no more. Like Nina is just being totally ridiculous. I thought she had some sense this year. Like... Here, I thought she was about to get some sense. Like, she'd be having these little flickers, these little moments where you think she's sane. And then she reverts back to the BS. I'm like, mind your business. But she's so quick to run her mouth about Carly and what Carly's allegedly doing or what she think Carly doing. But she not telling anybody about how she fucked Drew in the office. She ain't telling nobody about that one. She don't want Sonny to know about that. But you sit here talking about what would Sonny or Drew think or Jason think. Girl, what would Sonny think if he found out that you was up in here doing the hippity-dippity in the office? How would he feel? What you think he was going to think about it? Oh, she ain't talking about that, though. But you want to be uh, in other people's business. Nina need to go sit down somewhere. She really do. What grown folk do is not your business. Um... As far as the hotel go, Nina is definitely getting a lot of shit for the way that the hotel is is being run right now. Like she is definitely Carly was laying all that blame because <laughs> she was like, what the hell going on with this hotel? The water not getting warm enough. Breakfast ain't being brought up on time. They done left the breakfast out at the door. Like room service done left the breakfast outside the room. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's not how that go. But my whole thing is, though, I mean, the only excuse would be is that Nina's basically running the hotel by herself at this moment because Olivia's so focused on Dante. But my whole thing is Dante's home now. He got Sam and, you know, Sam should be taking care of him and whatnot. So I don't feel like Nina should be getting the brunt of that. I feel like Olivia should be getting some blame, too. She's the co-owner. And that's what baffled me, too, when Olivia was complaining about Nina firing one of the waiters or whatever or the wait staff or whatever one of them people because they said nina fired one of them but my whole thing is nina can't fire anybody without olivia's input she ain't got no authority to do that by herself um but i i mean i get where carly coming from that hotel do seem like it's going to hell in a handbasket <laughs> like, it just seemed like it's off um I kind of enjoy Carly and Jagger little conversation and stuff about do she miss running the hotel and stuff like that. I mean, if Carly wanted to, she could easily, well, not easily, but she could create a brand new hotel and solely own it if she wanted to. I mean, Jason was going to leave her half of his estate. Surely she could easily go to him for the funds, even though I know she don't like asking people for money, but she could go to Jason. She can go to Michael. Either one of them would be quick, especially Jason. He'd be fast to open up that checkbook. Um, and write her a fat check to start her own restaurant. I mean, her own hotel. I mean, why not at this point? Um, I definitely feel like something is probably going to go down between Carly and Jagger. Because the way that they were acting and talking today, I was like, it definitely looked like it might go down. It might go down in the DM. It seemed like it might go down between them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at this point because she did give him a little smile and, you know, having conversation with the man. 
And you know Carly don't normally have conversation with folks she don't like. Not pleasant conversation. And her and Jagger seemed like they were pleasant. Do you know they was having pleasantries? Um so I wouldn't be shocked about that. So anyway, moving on from that. Um I don't I you know what? I was kind of surprised that Drew actually had a good business idea. I was shocked. I was a little bit shocked. My boy Drew, even though I don't like him, I can't stand him, actually came up with a smart idea about a wellness and fitness club. I think that was smart. You know, about Aurora Media getting into the wellness and fitness game. I think that's brilliant. It's smart because it's such a big business. Like, it's an ever-growing market. And even in my state and stuff, we have, like, what him and Michael and Curtis were talking about, we have those types of clubs, like, where they're, you know high end you know what i mean like they're they're luxury fitness clubs we have that type of stuff even in my state we have that and they're booming businesses so and i even like the idea of curtis running it because it is smart i mean he's a physically fit person he's into physical fitness and wellness and stuff he's a logical choice to head up the division i think it was brilliant you know i think it was dead on and michael was on board with it even curtis you know curtis has some bright ideas about what to turn it into and stuff like that buy up a bunch of small gyms and you know make them high end and i think it could work i mean are they gonna build a new fitness set for us to see you know what i'm saying i would love that too you know i know don corinthos ain't gonna like it <laughs> you know because sonny owned a gym his damn self so i know if they built a luxury wellness fitness center or whatever in town i'm pretty sure to you know mess up his little business he probably won't be too thrilled but um i like the idea i think it was smart um and it gives curtis something else to do other than the savoy i think it was i, I like it i like the idea um anyway moving on from that I don't blame BLQ for freaking out and stuff about the wedding and, and you know, making sure that everything going to be right. I mean, most people, when they're planning a wedding, you're going to freak out before the wedding. Like, you probably will break out into hives over your wedding. You know what I'm saying? Because you just want everything to be perfect. You want everything to be right. And I'm glad that, you know, she gave her mother to go ahead to do her, you know, to rock her style, you know, because I know Lois didn't want to steal BLQ's thunder and stuff like that. You know, she wanted to dress a little bit more understated and whatnot. But I like how BLQ was like, no, be you. You know what I'm saying? You can't come to the wedding and not be you. I love that. What shocked me was Chase. When Chase told her that he got them a brand new honeymoon, like they're going to Florence, Italy. I was shocked because when he mentioned Florence, I was like, wait a minute. What you mean Florence? Like Florence from the Jeffersons, Florence. Like what you mean Florence? I was trying to think, like, what you talking about, Florence? And when he, they say Italy, I was wondering for a minute. I said, now, how he get the money to pay for it? Florence, Italy? I was about to say, you use your credit card or something? Because I was about to say, if you use your credit card, you must have burnt the you must have burned the plastic off that sucker. I know that plastic is melted if you use that credit card. Because I said, Florence, Italy ain't cheap. But he sold his truck or whatever. And I'm like, okay, so if you sell your truck, which is basically now a used truck, so if you sell your truck, I'm like, how much was the damn truck? Like, are y'all going first class? Like, first class accommodations? Because when BLQ was talking about going to all these restaurants and gelato and all these different places, I said, oh, <laughs> I hope you got some spending money. <laughs> Sound like she about to melt the rest of them credit cards up. I said, okay. I was happy, though. I said, go ahead, Chase. I still kind of feel like money is probably going to come into play in a marriage, though. I feel like it will. I mean, he had to sell his truck just to pay for some high end honeymoon. You know what I'm saying? Like we know BLQ was about the BLQ was definitely about the finer things in life. So I'm wondering if that's going to, you know, come into play. But I, I love that he did that. You know, that's a huge thing to do, you know, sell a truck, you know, that I'm pretty sure he probably loved just to pay for a honeymoon. Like that's huge. You know, BLQ better be giving him some punani every night for that. I'm just saying, even after the honeymoon, she better be giving up the draws every night. Like, this man done sold his truck so y'all go to Italy instead of Palm Beach. Like, that that deserves some coochie every night. I'm just saying, like, seven nights a week on call. You know, like, come on now. That's some everyday, I want some coochie. I don't care if you got a headache type money. Like, 
Because you know how when you marry some women, be like, nah, not tonight, I got a headache. Nah, he spent that kind of bread on the Italy, and she better give it up. Um, I'm just saying. I was impressed. I said, go ahead. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. My uh, TJ. I'm sorry, but I, I, I can't agree with what Marshall was saying. Marshall sitting here basically giving him the advice. Oh, you got to see the big picture and, you know, you just got to capture those moments just for you and Molly. Sir, it's not just about that. <laughs> like, it's not about them just spending time with each other. Like, this is about the surrogacy and stuff. Like, TJ Ben had misgivings about Christina being a surrogate. And now he feels even more unsure about her being a surrogate. The problem is, it's too little too late. She's already pregnant. Ain't nothing you can do. I feel like TJ gave in to Molly. Because remember, TJ didn't want to start looking for new surrogates right away after they lost the last baby. He didn't want to do it right away. I think he gave in so fast because of Molly. Is He knew that's what she really wanted. And I think that's why he's doing a lot of this, to give Molly what she wants. And he's neglecting what he wants. Him and Molly need to sit down and have a conversation. The problem is Molly keep avoiding him. That's not going to work in a relationship. I know they they in this domestic partnership or whatever. I try to call it a marriage instead of domestic partnership. I, I just prefer marriage, the word marriage better. But I mean, you can't be in no serious relationship like that and keep walking away every time y'all need to have a serious conversation. You can't keep avoiding that. So he need to lock her in a room with him, do, do what you got to do. But they need to sit down and talk. And he needs to stop giving in to Molly all the time when that's not really what he wants. Like, this is serious business, bringing a child into the world. And a surrogate is even bigger business because this person got to carry the child for nine months. And if he feels these, you know, these, he got these reservations, he need to speak on it because that's serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not keen on Christina being pregnant and being around Sonny, seeing how shit is hitting the fan with Sonny right now. And I see his point of view on that. You know, because being around Sonny is definitely dangerous. It's bad for your health at this moment. So I get him. I get exactly where TJ coming from. But him and Molly need to sit down and have a conversation. Speaking of Molly, did she really think Alexis was going to help her? <laughs> Alexis said, no, no bueno. Can't help you. <laughs> like, I don't give a damn if the DA office think that you're the source. Let them think whatever they want. I mean... I do think it's kind of a little messed up that Alexis left her off the dry because Alexis was like, well, I can't and won't help you. Um, but I'm I'm happy that Alexis is getting a new hearing and stuff like that. Like she got new new hope to get her law license back because Nina is pretty much hell on wheels at the invader. A part of me don't feel bad for Alexis because of that mess she pulled with the judge that got Drew released. I ain't like how she did that. But I, I get it, though, you know, as far as having Nina as a boss and Nina just doing whatever the hell she wanted to do with this gossip columnist. I don't blame Alexis for being pissed about that, you know, because Alexis didn't want, you know, the invader to go back to being a sleazy tabloid. And she feels like every day that's what it's going back to. I don't blame her. I, I can't say I fought her for that. I'll be ready to get the hell on, too. Because Nina didn't care. Nina was like, OK, you talking about quitting? There's the door. <laughs> hey, Nina did not care. I'm pretty sure if up to Nina, she will promote that gossip columnist in a minute. He'll be the brand new editor in chief. He's already the assistant editor. So, you know, once Alexis goes, he's going to be bumped up to editor in chief. It's only a matter of moments before it happened. It's going to happen. Um, if I was Alexis, I would have packed up my office expeditiously and left. Bump that. It ain't like she need the money. I mean, I get why she trying to hang on and stuff like that, but I just would have left because that, that's not a situation that's going to work. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. I enjoyed that little scene between Anna and Valentine. Valentine is a real prick. I really don't see him and Anna getting back together after all of this. I really don't. After the stuff that happened with Charlotte and now this pipe and stuff, I don't see her taking him back. I really don't. I don't see them getting back together. Because it was such a good game of cat and mouse between them. Because Anna knew. She knew Valentine knew something about Brennan. She knew he knew something about Pikeman. She ain't no dummy. She knew. Because she even recalled how they were close back in the day. And Valentine was gaslighting the shit out of her. He gaslit the hell out of Anna. Oh, I think you're remembering somebody else. Because me and Brennan weren't close back then. Sir, don't, don't do that gaslighting mess. And when she told him, oh, well, I'm just going to go have to meet up with Brandon again. And when he said don't because it's dangerous, I think. And when she told him, oh, thank you for the breakfast or whatever. 
I think she knew at that moment it confirmed to her what she already suspected that he's up to his ass and pipeman and he know more about pipeman than what he's trying to say. I think that confirmed it for her. I think that definitely confirmed it because if you don't really know nothing about pikeman and you were just a messenger for them, why are you jumping up so quick talking about no? And why are you trying to gaslight her into thinking that you were never involved with Brennan back in the day when you really were? Like, Anna ain't no fool. Um, I enjoyed that. That was a good little cat and mouse game between them. I totally enjoyed it. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. Peace. Peace.